Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Welcome back to the same old Arsenal podcast, episode 79. Bottled it. Big time. Uh, joining me this evening to talk about um, the game last night and the three games previous, I suppose, um, is, of course, uh, the Fab Three. Uh, Mr. Judges, uh, Mr. Brooks and Mr. Harry Simeon. We'll start off with a judge. How are you, sir? A disappointing weekend. Um, no Champions League for us unless we win the Europa League. Um, briefly, how are you feeling, mate? Oh, I'm massively disappointed, Craig. I've got, got to say, you know, I feel let down. I feel let down by everything that's going on at the moment. You know, I had a big lift on um, Thursday when we... Um, when we got the result against Valencia by, by a last-minute goal, which kept us very much in it because I felt if 2-1 we was in danger of going out, we've got a chance now. But then to produce another performance like that on Sunday, well, especially, Craig, when you knew what was going on, you knew we had to win the game. Uh, and we went out there very, very lethargic. And I'm very, very disappointed. I may be a little bit... I've been very, very much supportive of... Um, Emery at the beginning of, of all the season, really. I felt that um, that he's um, he's done a fairly good job. But I have to say, like, these last seven games, I've seen some very, very worrying signs. Worrying signs. If this is what it's going to be like next season when there's a bit of pressure on going for, for whatever, uh, I felt we had a very, very good chance of top four. In fact, we should have got top four uh, with, with the fixtures that we had, with the, 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 the teams that we were coming up against. Um, when you look at it now, Craig, it, all we had to do was win our two home games against Palace and Brighton and we would have been in the top four. And as disappointed as I am, even if we'd have won yesterday, which still wasn't been guaranteed that we was going to be in the in the chance of... We, we, we still might not have got top four. But, you know, with Spurs, what happened to them the other day with two their strikers not being available, it put a lot of pressure on them on that last game of the season. and. You know, I, I just don't know what's going on. We've made mistake after mistake with with players, the team selection, the manager, and the tactics. Summed up yesterday, as um, I said yesterday, with the the substitution. You know, what I mean, we're looking for a goal when we bring on Guendouzi. It's just been mistake after mistake. Now I, I'm prepared to um, say I've had heated discussions with a lot of people today about Emery. I'm prepared to to give him the benefit of the doubt because we've still got the Europa League. But after those seven games, and Craig, you look at that, that's 18 points available. We've got four. Mm, very poor. It's poor. It's, it's poor. It's worrying. And that's why I will say that, you know, because of that situation, it's a bit harsh on Emery because he put us in that position. But other getting us into that position, you know, to get four points from 18, Craig, I, it, we failed. We failed to get to top four and I can't help it. I'm very, very disappointed. I'm disappointed with the, like, the players. I'm disappointed with myself because um, Aaron Ramsey, Petr and Danny Welbeck were leaving. Uh, two of those players have broken legs to play uh, to play for Arsenal Football Club and the send-off they got was like a, a quarter of a stadium full because realistically, everybody had left in the disappointment of uh, of the players letting us down. There was so much disappointment. The players let the fans down yesterday. The fans felt gutted about it. And because of that, there was, you know, five, six, seven thousand fans left in the stadium at the end. And, you know, players like Danny Welbeck and particularly Aaron Ramsey and Petacek deserve much better than that. Absolutely. Good evening to you all in the chat box. Hang on a second, I've just got to do something. We're live! <laughs> We're live! <laughs> We're live! Don't jinx it, Craig. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. We're a bit dizzy now. <laughs> Good afternoon to you all in the chat box. We're live. Um, after a horrible few weeks. Um, again, now that we're live, I'd just like to apologise for all the uh, mishaps we've had over the last few weeks. I don't know what's been going on. Um, but we're here now, uh, so it's all good. Uh, thank you, Rob J. Rob, for the first donation of the evening. Thank you very much. Five pounds. Uh, thank you, mate. That's a, that's a, that's a hamburger each off the Eurosaver menu. We're eating like kings. Harry, how are you doing, mate? I've had better days, 
but <laughs> you know, as far as Arsenal are concerned, anyway. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I suppose we're going to get right into it. I mean, there's, there's no nitty gritty about it. But with Graham, um, how are you feeling? Well, uh, all right, mate. Not too bad. A bit of a quiet bank holiday. Had a great day yesterday at the Emirates, uh, and then we kicked off. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I had the privilege yesterday of meeting uh, Lee's beautiful wife Michelle. So that was the highlight of the day. And I, oh, and I met. Her. Yeah, she's a looker. He's punching above his weight there. He isn't is. He? I ain't going to miss And um, I have to say, I've been privileged to meet Mrs. Same Old Arsenal, Karen Russell. Oh, really? Now, yes. Uh, good oh, old Karen great. come up and said hello, which was a nice moment. And then to meet uh, Lee's wife as well was really nice yesterday. I think the less said about the football, the better, mate. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, let's get straight into it, right? Let's go to Harry first. Because I know you're probably, you've probably been itching. I know you've done your own podcast yesterday, but I'm sure you're itching to uh, get it out of your system. Now, I'm going to start off by saying Uno Emery comes to Arsenal, right? And we all sat around the table and we all said, yeah, look, you know, it's going to take a while. We all sat around and we all said that and we all admitted it. Um, it's going to take a while to... For him to get his own players in, um, for him to get into the transfer market, to bring in his type of players. We all sat here and we said, if he got into the top four, it would be an achievement. Um, I called it a miracle. We should have got into the top four, Harry. We should have got into the top four. Um, there's no, you know, there's no getting around it. We should be, we should be sitting in third now on the beach and playing a nothing game against Burnley at the weekend. Um, and getting ready for a Europa League semi-final. He went on a 20-game unbeaten run. He got the plaudits. The players got the plaudits, um, and, and rightly so. Now things have gone pear-shaped. Now he's in... Now he knows what it's like to be manager of Arsenal. Um, he's getting slated. He's getting called this. He's getting called that. Um the players have got to take a massive bit of responsibility for this, um, in my opinion. Emery's made mistakes, but the players, I've got to say, I think the players have got to take most of the blame. I think you're right in the sense that the players are responsible. And I think the way I summed it up after yesterday's game was they're equally responsible with the manager. Now, you guys will know that this is not a knee-jerk reaction from me. I've been saying from yeah. very early on in the season that I'm not sure about Unai Emery for a number of reasons. I, I didn't agree with the constant tinkering of the team. Um, I thought it disrupted us and it stopped us building any sort of rhythm in any sort of system. Graham is a tactics man. I'm sure he'll come on to it in a little bit. But we've played God knows how many different formations this season. It's different personnel every week. And for me... Whilst I, like, look, I, I don't totally blame Unai Emery. I don't say that he's the sole reason for this situation. But I do, I will say, and I've been saying it all season, that we were in the top four race because of the circumstances around us, not because we've become so much better. So Unai has to take some responsibility for the fact that in the last four games in particular, we've completely fallen apart. Like you said, we should have been on a beach by now. We should have been relaxing. And I blame Unai Emery mainly for that not solely but mainly because he's the manager and that's football isn't it the, the managers are ultimately responsible for teams results that's how it works that's why managers get sacked all the time you don't see clubs sacking 11 players but you'll see them sack a manager because it's his job to oversee this and for me the disruption of our tactics from week to week just makes absolutely no sense i mean when we was watching the get we was at the game yesterday and you know we we can see the stupid uh, penalty and Granite Xhaka was an absolute moron yesterday and I know I defend him yesterday what he done was inexcusable it was stupid it was pathetic um, but why Arsenal Football Club when we're talking about a manager that is is pra pragmatic and every time we we have a slow game everybody goes oh it's because he's a little bit more pragmatic well if he's pragmatic why on earth were we exposed in that situation in the first place with at one nil I, I don't get it. He played Stefan Licksteiner yesterday, who for me has not got the legs to play right back, even with a right midfielder in front of him. But our midfield was so narrow. It was like a 4-2-2-2, whatever it was. 
And it meant he had no protection. He was asked to defend. He was asked to get up and support the attack. And the guy is 35 years old. He just doesn't have the legs to do it. I'm sorry to say. And Brighton were getting at us from that position from the very off. Solly March and that Basuma was coming over as well. And the two were doubling up and causing us all kinds of problems in that area. And Unai Emery didn't address it. But what he did do was decide that the one period in the game where we had momentum was to make a triple substitution and completely disrupt that. You know, you need a goal. You bring on a left back, Alex Iwobi, who, who couldn't score in a brothel, and you bring on Matteo Genduzzi. Now, as bad as Granite Xhaka is, he probably would have been more likely to pick out a killer pass or bang one in for 30 yards than Matteo Guendouzi would have been. So, again, that made no sense to me either. And I think that Unai Emery shot himself in the foot with those changes. The very off, Solly His March and management was coming over as well. has just been the two were doubling up. poor for so long now. And he's been given a free ride by a lot of the Arsenal fans because they always say, oh, you know, it's his first season. And I get that. It's not his squad. But do you honestly believe, Craig, that this club are going to give him what he needs to go and get seven, eight players in? Because I don't. No, and, I don't. And so he needs to get more out of what he's got. We can be set up in a better way. We can be more organised. We can be more solid with the right man in charge. And yeah, I'll give him another season. Give him another season. You know, we brought him in for two years. That was always the deal. But questions have to be asked of him. And you've got to question whether this board and this club have seen enough to suggest that they will give him a large amount of funds in the summer to go and get players. I don't think he's done enough, in my opinion. Brian, what would you say to that? Um, well, I think we always knew that it was going to be a transitional year. Um, uh, I've got a lot of sympathy with em Emery. Um, I, I can understand why Harry's saying what he's saying. Um um, bearing in mind he was given a, 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 a very unbalanced aging sort of squad um, so I have got sympathy from that side but even as Harry says uh, the fact that it's been such a spectacular collapse does beg the questions uh, what's been going on the last few weeks um, I think what we got with Emery was um, a tactical manager I said it yesterday, I think he's very good at setting us up when we have to play the better sides. He knows how to stop teams playing, doesn't seem to know how to um, play on the front foot uh, and take these lesser teams apart, how to set the side up, uh, whether it's because he doesn't know how his best formation, whether he doesn't sort of uh, uh, understand uh, uh, or gives, he's a bit complacent when we play these lower league teams, I don't know. So, But what I thought yesterday watching that game was, I think... Uh, we just lacked intensity right from the off. I, I think these players turned up almost like uh, they just think that they're going to walk into the top four and that there's loads of chances to get into the top four. Uh, and I think that sent messages to Brighton quite early on that we weren't sort of playing at the uh, level. You really need to sort of be intense, uh, pushing teams back. Uh, and I didn't think we were at it from the, the off yesterday. Too many players wanted too many touches in central midfield. As Harry says, it was a strange sort of formation. I couldn't work out if it was a 4 2 2 2. Some people were saying it's a 4 2 3 1, but it could even be a bad 4 4 2. Because when they started off, I thought uh, Mikatarian started on the left and Ozil started on the right. But it's quite clear, as Harry says, as the game panned out, um, they were sort of Mikatarian and Ozil were just floating sentry wherever they wanted to go. And. Um, Mkhitaryan slightly unlucky yesterday with an early effort to hit the post, had that gone in. But we were given the uh, cushion of a penalty, weren't we? A penalty early on and maybe that sort of like relaxed the players too much. They were just too comfortable at 1-0 and uh, Brighton grew into the game. They'd already served notice uh, down that side. I was very impressed by, I don't know if Lee uh, noticed that, Basuma, their coloured um, or black uh, central midfielder. He certainly sort of carried the ball forward. Him and March, Soddy March were sort of like uh, good combinations down that uh, Licksteiner side. And as Harry said, Licksteiner has been asked to get up and down the pitch. He hasn't got the legs for it. Monreal looked every inch of his uh, age yesterday as well in the left back position. And I think in hindsight, now it's people are going to say, oh, you're so good at talking about Emery in hindsight. I wouldn't have played Licksteiner yesterday. I, I couldn't work out if it was because we expected to beat Brighton and it was like his last hope. They just thought they'd give him a home game. I would have played Mustafi uh, there yesterday uh, and I would have probably, um, I think, gone with Kolasinac on the left 
uh, and probably play Monreal in the middle. I think Monreal's better at the moment. He has got the pace at left back, so maybe play him in the middle with uh, with uh, Socrates. Just they even brought Mavropanos in. I don't know what his position was with him, but I I didn't think that we were set up right at the back. But I didn't think that was the reason. I just think we lacked intensity right at the start. We were really intense against uh, Valencia. And I just wonder if that took something out of the players or whether they were just too comfortable. I mean, uh, uh, Jacker and Ozil sort of like were sort of like strolling around a bit yesterday. Uh, Ozil and Jacker both created a lot of chances. Uh, but for all that, I thought Brighton were fairly comfortable. Their keeper made a few saves. In the second half, Brighton came out and suddenly thought that they could get something out of the game. And they become more intense. And that, that goal was coming down that side. And as Harry said, uh, Lick Steiner, although it was Mkhitaryan who gave the ball away, um, that that was the area they're always looking to exploit. Jacker doesn't have to do what he has to do, but I did say, did think he just he didn't touch him very much, and he went over quite easily. But we got the fortune of the penalty uh, in the first half, which probably was just as soft as theirs. And then, funny enough, when it went back to one-one, uh, we suddenly raised our game. It's almost like a, uh, something, a, a light was switched on. The players suddenly became intense, and suddenly, for 15 minutes, as Harry said, we were on top. And then he made that triple substitution, which was absolutely bizarre. That took the whole emphasis out of our attacking play. And I have to say, looking at yesterday, I was looking at that team, and I thought Lee summed it up brilliantly in his interview on Arsenal Fan TV. We've come to the stadium, and a lot of these players are just not good enough. Uh, and uh, you have to say next season, if you're looking at players to keep, I'll just finish with this and let Lee get on with his rant. But I think that there's just like, looking at that side yesterday, Lacazette, Aubameyang, Leno, Torero, so- Torreira, Socrates and Bellerin. Apart from that, who would you actually keep if you're going into next season? You can't get rid of all of them. But Emery's going to be uh, supreme pressure now to win that Europa League. He always felt he was brought in to win the Europa League. And I think we've been playing the last few weeks like we've been prioritising the Europa League. So that's the message I took out yesterday. Not good enough, not intense enough. Uh, we were intense against Valencia. We actually pushed them back uh, with really in their midfielders' faces. But we couldn't produce it yesterday and Brighton sensed it. And I have to say, just some stats on Brighton. They score... 40% of their goals from set plays or from penalty kicks. And they got one yesterday. They've only scored one goal in their last eight games. Uh, and yet yesterday, uh, they got a draw at the Emirates. And they've t- taken two points off us this season. We haven't beaten Brighton home and away. Disappointing, not good enough. Uh, and I'll hand it over to Mr. Judges. Craig, can I just say one thing really, really that? quickly? Yeah. Just one thing that winds me up, that the excuse that I always you hear. Want to no, Harry's talking. Sorry, mate. Sorry, just one second. <laughs> just one thing that really winds me up is everyone goes on about, oh, we lost Bellerin, we lost Welbeck, we lost Holding. I have some sympathy for the Bellerin thing. However, lots of our fans were talking about him not being good enough at the end of last season. And all of a sudden, he's the Messiah. Danny Welbeck was never anything more than a squad player. And Rob Holding is a rookie centre-back. So for me yep. to, to, to say that, we've capitulated and we've not been able to achieve anything this season because of Rob Holding missing. It, for me, is is ridiculous. I'm sorry. We're Arsenal Football Club. We need better than that. We need better just, than a rookie centre-half. Just one, yeah, thing, before, you, just one thing, Craig, before Harry, before uh, Lee comes in, and, and I get what Harry's saying, but Welbeck would have done two things for us, right? One, he would have taken a bit of pressure off the front too. Or, and you sometimes look at a Bamian and Lacazette whether they're playing on empty sometimes because they're playing every single game. We could have rotated better. Welbeck could have come on. One could have been sacrificed in certain games and Welbeck could have either played up top or could have played out wide. Welbeck would have offered us work right, work rate in a wide position. We haven't got players in wide positions who work back uh, well and sort of support the fullbacks. Welbeck would have offered us that. So well, I agree with what Harry's saying that they're not, uh, he's not top quality. I think he could have done a job for us and I think he's been a big miss. Lee, um... I sit you down at the start of the season and I say to you, fifth and a, and a, and a Europa League final, um, would you have taken it? Yeah, of course. I think you've got to be honest about that. But then if you ask me that question with seven games to go, then I don't. I, I, I would say no. What I would say, I think, um, just going on to the Danny Welbeck, Welbeck film, I put a tweet out when he got injured and I said that'd be a big blow for us. And I got laughed at. You know, I'm absolutely laughed at about it. You know what I mean? He has been a massive loss to us because he does exactly what Graham just said there. He takes pressure off of the two forwards. We could have played him in a different game. He also can play wide and give us pace and power and a width. If you would go back to the game against Fulham, 
he stretched all the, the defence, made them tired on, come uh, uh, Bamiang and uh, Ramsey that day, and they, they, they had a field day. And I think that that's been a problem. But I will say this, we had a chance to um, redeem that in the uh, January transfer window with a loan signing if we couldn't sign anybody. But we chose to go down the Suarez route, so that's a mistake. Um, and the argument is, and I tell you, and I, I get this argument, is that we've had these seven games in between the Europa League games. And maybe it is the fact that Emery has um, probably gone and looked at it and, and had one eye on these games coming up. And if that is the case, then that's fair enough. And and if he goes on to get Europa League and get us through to the Champions League there, he can turn around and say, do you know what? I, I, I wanted us more. It was more important for us to win a trophy and to get to the Champions League that route. I've got not a problem with that, but he's put himself under a little bit of pressure to do that now. That's my worry about that. The, the, the thing that worries me about resting players is that I've always been brought up and when I played football and all that, like, you know, it was always, it was more physical if you was a forward, more physical running if you was a wide player or a midfield player. So, that, so when the players that were rested, say like 20, 10 minutes from the game, say if he was winning the game two or three nil, the manager would take off his forwards or he'd take off his midfield players. He'd never take off his defenders. And, you know, the question was why is because when they, they ain't physically uh, run down as much as the players in other areas. And I, I, I've always believed that, and I think that it's a fair point. But here we are, going into games where we're resting players, and it just seems to be the back players are being rested. Bamiang wasn't rested yesterday. Lacazette weren't rested yesterday. Ozil, Shaka weren't rested. You know, it seems to be, you know, players from the back, back are rested and, and, and players like that. You have a look, at, you know, I don't like to go on it about Spurs, but when they rest, they rest their fullbacks. And, but they're two central defenders. They try and keep as much together as possible. And I, I think that there's disruption in the back four, which is unnecessary. And I also feel that when you're not great in the defence, you know, he's trying to get that team unit and get something going from there. And the other thing is, that again, I'm going to question, is that, We've got a decision to make, and Graham come up with it there, you know, by by saying about bringing in Lickerstein. Uh, you know, who's going to benefit? What's going to benefit Arsenal more? Uh, Dino Mavera Pambalopoulos playing, <laughs> or 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 or, Steph, or Stefan Lickerstein? You know, what I mean, the argument to me is Dino needs games, so, so why don't you play him? You know, and I just think. That the only excuse that I can give Emery at this moment is that he has totally focused on the Europa League. And if that is the case, I've not got a problem. I've not got a problem with it. If it means that we've, we've beaten Napoli and we can beat Valencia, you've got to say that's two good scalps. And it takes us to the final, probably against Chelsea and a one-off with Chelsea. And if we beat them, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to say that in, 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 in the terms of everything, if you said to me, like, you know, at the beginning of the season, Craig, going back to your question, if, if you finish top four and no, no Europa League or you finish fifth and win the Europa League, what would you take? I would take fifth and the Europa League. So, at, at the moment, things are on track from that point of view, you know. So, I will say that on, on Emery, but I, I cannot help but worry about some of the things that he's done, you know, and the mistakes he's making now. Is he making those mistakes because he's under pressure? Now, uh, because the top four is all, all of a sudden, how can I say it? You know, Graham just said it. He's got a free hit this season. It's a free season. All of a sudden, you know, oh, well, yeah, he's made a mistake. Oh, well, he's still learning, blah, blah, blah. But it comes to those last seven games, all oh, pressure. We've got a chance of getting into the top, top four now. And, for whatever reason, it's just not happened. Now, I'm, as I say, I go back to the, the re I'm hoping it's because of the Europa League. But if it's not, there's my worry. That's my key worry. And anybody that, you know, that, listen, I've got, I've got people at this moment, you know what I mean, that will just back Emery because they feel they, they've, they've slagged off Wenger so much. They can't, they can't, uh, they can't say, oh, we, we need, we need to change the manager. I'm, and I'm, I'm not saying that we need to change a manager. What I'm saying is if we don't get to the Europa League and we don't get to the top four, um, which we haven't, then you, as a club, 
of we've got to be ruthless. You know, top, top clubs are ruthless. You know, if Real Madrid come in six in the league, would their manager be in the job? No. Whether it's a year, two years. Now, they wouldn't be. Now, people have turned around and said, well, we don't want to be, we don't want to end up like Man United. But Man United are a different scenario to, scenario to us because Manchester United can afford to spend 200, 300 million and then go and spend another 200, 300 million which we can't by all accounts. But I'll go on to... Yeah, Manchester United have not changed their fo their football ground and, and changed it all completely around. They're still at Old Trafford. You know, we have moved from our home to the Emirates and for, the, for, for what? Europa League football and a top four challenge every season. I'm sorry, I'm not accepting that. As an Arsenal fan, I'm not accepting that. I go and watch my team and spend money on my team like we all do, whether it be um, going to games or not, I am an Arsenal fan and I believe I I should expect, when I put my money through the turnstiles, which I have done and whatever, I expect better defending than what I'm getting. I am getting Mickey Mouse defending, right? And it's not being improved. And as a, as a fan... I, I feel that I deserve better than that, Craig. I'm sorry. I, I deserve, and do you know what? I'm not, what makes me feel that I deserve more than anything else? Do you know what? If we were still at Highbury and we was like we are now, I would not be as half as bitter and as upset about it. But the fact of the matter is that they took all that away to say that we are going to be one of the best teams competing in Europe. And at this moment in time, we're not competing in nothing. You know what I mean? We, we, you know... We're competing in the Europa League at this moment in time. Very much competing in the Europa League. I'm and still we've, there, got don't a, we've got a chance of um, uh, of doing well in that. But, you know, come on, guys. You know, people keep going, oh, you need one or two years to sort this mess out. You know, other teams don't have all of that. Chelsea were a couple of years ago in, in, in the Europa League. Or, no, didn't even get into the Europa League. Conte came in and won the won in the league in his first season. There wasn't no one in Chelsea going that's going to take him two or three years. It was done and dusted. You know, people turn around and say, oh, we don't want to be like Man United because we swap and we want to be swapping and changing managers and you're not going to get success. But on the other hand, Chelsea do it and they're still getting success. You know, Sarri's in his first season. He's got success because he's got into the top four and a chance of winning the Europa League. But Chelsea are in Champions League football next season. So as far as I'm concerned, their manager's done what, he, what he's been asked to do. And that is my worry about everything at this moment in time. It is a big worry for me. Um, and from my point of view, I am a little bit, I, I don't know. I don't want to slag off um, Emery too much. I don't want to criticise him too much. But when you look at it, I'm very, very worried about what, what is going on at our football club because of that. And you can say about tactics, you can say about anything else you want, but I'll come back to the bottom line is four points from 18 is not good enough. It's not good enough for Arsenal. And when I ask people this question and I say to them, well, what you know about Emery and everything? Oh, yeah, but he's got more points and all that, like, you know, and that's fantastic. Yeah, we have. When we have challenged for the top four, but ultimately... We've not got into the top four like we didn't like last season. But also, we keep conceding goals left, right and centre. And nothing seems to be, doing, be doing, done about it, boys. You know what I mean? And that's my worry. I expected to see a lot better from us defensively this season. Um, and it's just not happened. Um, yeah, uh, Bill seems to agree with you there. Thanks for the super chat, Bill. Uh, the real Arsenal died on the 7th of May 2006. Uh, we've never recovered since. We've no captain or leaders. Um, this is the price we've paid for modern football. That is another great point, Craig. Yeah. Captain. Captain. Yeah. You know, well, I've, you know, I've always said about that. We've never replaced Vieira. Um, so, you know, Different captain every week. I know. We've never replaced him. The, we've, we've said it before that the captaincy at this club is a complete farce. Um, I think we gave it to Theo Walcott once because it was his birthday. I mean, you know, what, what can you say? Um but Emery's been there a year and he hasn't he hasn't been able to to to, to recognise a captain of the club. You know, like I thought, oh, I thought, I thought, I thought Kishelny's Kishelny is a captain. Is a yeah, captain. but to be honest with you, right? And I'll bring the two boys back in on this one. To be honest with you, I can't recognise a captain either. 
On that because he does it, but he does. He's not yeah, a he's, captain, is he? Come exactly. On. We need another. You know, we need another. We need another leader. Now, I put a tweet out the other day. Um, like I said, I'd give it to Lacazette. Um, a lot of people agreed. More people disagreed, but I think that he deserves a go at it. Um, and people are saying, "Oh, never give a striker a captaincy. Never give the striker a captaincy." You know, they weren't saying that when Sierra Marie was captain. Um, I think he deserves a go. He should, you know. And people say, "Oh, I say that he shows fight, that he shows determination, that he shows." And people are saying, oh, "I don't want players to do that." Of course, you want players to do that. Um, you know, it's not good. That's not why we should give him the captaincy. Um, well, I disagree. I think he's the only one that shows any kind of work rate, that shows any kind of um, care um, when he's playing. I, ju I just, you know, and to answer your question, can he see, well, why can't he see a captain? I can't see one. Harry, can you? No, I can't, but I'm not surprised that Emery can't come up with one when we're talking about a manager who has got one game left before the end of the season and he doesn't even know what his starting 11 is. He doesn't know what his best 11 is. He doesn't know what his best system is. There's so many questions that he doesn't know. And, and that's why he can't make any decisions in anything. Now, for me, I would have liked to have seen a manager come in and stick to his guns and say, like Maurizio Sarri's done. And Lee's just said there that he's, he's ended up getting some success at the end of it because he came in, he stuck to his guns, he's persevered with his way. And in the end, it's starting to come good. Now, that's what Emery should have done. Emery, for me, doesn't even believe in what he's doing because if he did, he wouldn't be chopping and changing it every week. He wasn't like this at previous clubs. Have a look back at his tenures at PSG at Sevilla. He didn't change formation every week. He didn't change his 11 every week. He's doing that now at Arsenal because he doesn't have a flipping Scooby what he's doing. And at the end of the day, for me, I'm not surprised that no one's been the standout captain. I, I totally take the point on board that no one really deserves it. But I always think that when you, you're selected a captain, it's either the standout leader. In the case you don't have one, it's your best player. And Emery's done none of that. He's one week is Shaka, one week it's Ozil. Then Ozil can't get in the team. And then it's Koscielny. And then it's, you know, Monreal. And then it's Czech. And it's just a mess. It's just a mess from top to bottom. Is that because it's whoever's birthday it is? I don't know. Yeah, it must be. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm convinced he flips a coin or something. I don't know. Yeah. Graham, what would you say? I mean, next season. Uh, well, I mean, we still need we still need the leader now. We, you know, we've got the semi finals to play on Thursday. We're one game away from a European final. But next season, Emery has got such a lot of work to do. Um, like Lee says, he's got to be ruthless. Um, he's got to get rid um, of the dead wood. Dead wood is arguable um but there's a lot of players in that team on big wages who are just not worth the money in my opinion um and one of the things that he's got to sort out is his captaincy um to bring us a leader on the pitch yeah yeah i 100 agree with you um um i think if you watch unai emery's uh, press conferences he always talks about searching for the balance between attack and defense and i think uh, this season, uh, one thing I will say is that um, uh, just coming back to the Harry's point, first of all, about uh, uh, continually chopping and changing. And it's such a fine line, isn't it, between what we're talking about here? Because we used to criticise uh, Arsene Wenger for continually playing a 4-2-3-1, playing, always playing the same style of football, not changing. So and all of a sudden we've got a manager and it's quite ironic, isn't it? That we've got a manager now who chops and changes every week. And you've got the two new managers who've come into English football. Sorry, sticking by his principles, playing the same way every week, you know, possession based four, three, three. And you've got, uh, Emery completely, uh, flipping. I think the reason for that is been a lot of the injuries that he's had. And that's part of it. I partly, I don't think he trusts us defensively. So, uh, he's sort of like continually trying to find that balance. He talks about between attack and the defense, also, I think he's growing to learn the Premier League. He doesn't remember it's his first season in the Premier League. Every ground he goes to is a new ground for him. It's a new country. And I think maybe that's part of it. I think for me, a captain should be, I agree with what the boys have said. It's either your best player, uh, cricket style, uh, you know, you, uh, you go for your best, most talented player. But for me, I like my captain to be somebody either uh, centre-half or centre-mid, someone who can see the bigger picture. It's uh, You know, our best captains have been 
uh, your Frank McClintock's, your Tony Adams, your Patrick Vieira's, they can see uh, the game ahead of them and they can, but it's also, you've got to have a bit of personality. Uh, you either lead by example as a captain in the way you play, but you've also got to sort of like think about the others in the team. You've got to cajole them. And, and so a captain, I think is somebody, it's a bit unique, you know, because you've got to not only worry about your own game, you've got to worry about other people's games. And I think this team has got a fragile mentality. They're very soft. And uh, I don't know if anyone saw the interview I did on Arsenal Fan TV yesterday. I got quite a lot of uh, um, stuff in the chat uh, on Twitter because I grabbed Robbie uh, by the coat. I was trying to sort of like, <laughs> you know, sort of how dare you manhandle the Don, you know, Don Robbie. Uh, what I was trying to say to him, this is, I don't take any credit for this because Lee said it to me. Me and Lee were talking on Hangouts and Lee's an ex-footballer. He understands the mentality of footballers. Our players have not got that winning mentality and our captains haven't got the, our players haven't got the mentality to be a captain. The ones he's got, you tend to think the fact that he can't give the job to someone. But what you saw in that Maitland Niles sending off last week uh, was, as Lee said when he told me, when James Madison sort of like dived to get him sent off, he just went over to him, that's poor James, and just walked off. As Lee said, he, if, he, if that had been Lee and if that had been an Arsenal player from 1991 to 2004, they would have gone up to James Madison, grabbed him by the throat. And, and sort of like said, I'll see you in the car park outside, mate. And gone up to the referee and said, you got that wrong and just walked off. And uh, everyone would have known about it. But our players have got this soft mentality. So is there anyone actually standing out to be captain? And that's the thing. But for me, the captain has to be either your best player who leads by example, but someone I like, someone who can see the whole picture. Mm. So that's uh, what I think. But uh, he's been struggling all year, isn't he? And I think he's got the free pass this year, but are the board going to back him? Because uh, I tend to agree with what Harry said. He sort of come in because he could do the job on a budget. Or he, did he tell him he wouldn't need much money? I don't know. Maybe other managers weren't prepared to come what they were going to be given. Maybe other managers knew. But he, if he's not backed by the club this summer, he's going to have a massive task next year. And if he doesn't get it right next year, I don't think he'll be here a third year. So that's my would, view on it. I would love I to just see come in there, on Craig, I will say this about you, Roy Emery. If he's not backed in the summer... I hope I, 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 if he, if they say to to him you've got another year next season and they don't back him I won't be going for for Uriah Emery we then know it's the board you know what yeah. I mean like so I don't I don't you know I'm not I, I, at this moment in time I'm going to stick with Emery because I think that you know as, as all the circumstances that people keep telling me I agree with. He's still got the chance in Europa League. Let's not forget that. But if it comes to summer and he's given £45 million to sort this shambles out or £75 million, then it ain't down to him. Now, And it's down to the ball because I think at the end of the day that he should be given the right tools to be able to do the job. Now, at this moment in time, everybody's giving him the excuses that he's not got the right tools and I get that. But give, give this man the right tools and let's see where he can take us. And if if he continue and, and we don't get top four with the right tools, then you know it's the manager. But at this moment in time, we're still the board have got a big, big job on their hands in the summer, and that is to back this manager. Now, if they don't back the manager, then we're in trouble. And we know in the summer if he's going to be backed. It's as simple as that, like you know. So before we turn on Emery, let's turn on the ball before we do on Emery. But at this moment in time, I still say that he had the opportunity to get us into the top four with those four, four games, and uh, with those seven games, and he didn't do it. So my, my, as much as I want him to do well, I'm still going to have my reservations. Harry, what were you going to say there, mate? I was just going to say two two things. The first thing I was going to say was, I'd love to see what he had on those files that he supposedly turned up with when he was interviewed for the job. <laughs> I'd love to know what he thought he was going to get out of certain players this season, number one. And number two, just coming on from Lee's point there where he says that, you know, if the board back him, we'll know. Is there not an argument, though, that the board will decide not to back him on the basis of what they've seen this season? And that that could, the fact that we were in a position to finish in the top four, we've completely cocked it up. They'll use that as an excuse to not back him and say, well, we didn't beat up. We didn't see enough from Unai this season to suggest that it was worth making that sort of investment. Graham, I, I don't know what you think on that. Is there an argument that that could be the case? Yeah, I think so. I think it's a good point you make there. Um, I think the um, tools he's been given, I think that... Um, I agree with what Lee said yesterday. I, I think that you've got a lot of players just not good enough. I think also 
I think modern football, I, I put this out in a tweet today, uh, I think modern football is so structured now, so structured. Uh, teams are set up um, in a sort of like a structured way. Uh, that I think you, ha- you can't just sort of play. Uh, you've got to sort of like be really intense and you've got to have sort of like pace up front. That's the first thing you need. Uh, we have got that in in, in Bamiyang and Italy. Uh, but you also need to have intensity, work rate, Players who, who work really hard in midfield and close down, which we haven't got. We've got too many players, too fancy dons in midfield who are very comfortable on the ball, who love to have stroke it around, but don't really get bite into the tackle. Football's all about now, I think, physicality uh, and pace and power. You've got to get in, win your tackles, transition play quickly, get it forward to your forwards. And that's no secret. I mean, Liverpool won't want a trophy yet, as everyone keeps playing, as everyone keeps saying to me today. But, but the way they play football is is the way to win football matches. You play the percentages, you win your tackles, you transition quickly up the pitch and get at fullbacks quicker when teams are unstructured and not uh, everybody's set. And that's the way we sort of like play too slow. We're not quick the way we move the ball. We don't move the ball quick enough. Didn't move the ball quick enough against Brighton yesterday. They were able to get set quite uh, uh, easily. And I think that uh, the, the players that Emery's got, I think, uh, don't suit the way to win modern football matches. I have to say, that's just my view. I don't know if uh, Lee agrees with that. Yeah, I, you know, I totally agree with what you're saying there. Like, you know, it's, it, you can you can look at everything in there. And I agree what you said. You come up with a point earlier on and I think maybe I, I've got to take this on board and probably other people have as well, that, that the ones that are sticking up for Emery and all that, like that perhaps he's he's got a, a, a squad that's, <laughs> not balanced properly. I think you said that, yeah. Graham, earlier on. It's not yeah, balanced yeah. properly. Um, and he's not been able to probably get get the players or get rid of the players that he's wanted to do. So, and, I, I, and you know, in an answer, when you listen to that, I get that. Like, you know what I mean? I, 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 so, that's why I think that you've got to go on to the summer and see what happens from there. Yeah. But, um, you know... Um, I just don't think, Lee, we've got enough runners in our team, enough uh, athleticism, you know, enough players who basically can take players on, you know, like no, a Hazard and Salah. Got... That, that's what we lack, you know, don't we? Oh, we, we, we? Without that, we haven't got, I, I look at the team, you know, we, we play Mkhitaryan and Awobi as our wide players at times and it's certainly not happening. I'm, I'm not saying Awobi is the worst player in the team, but he's not really a wide player that's going to take on players. I think at the end of the day, Arsenal are crying out for, particularly in games like yesterday, a for winger. somebody like Saha that's going to just yeah. take on players and take go beyond the line. So that you can, when have we got a player that can take on two or three players, drive yeah. from certain areas, from well, I'd say like final third, halfway into the into the box and drive in past the box, get into the box, and then maybe get a penalty off it. We we don't do that. It's all little passes, which is intricate, so it's a little bit easier to defend a bit. Uh, but if you've got Say a Meza Ozil doing doing one side of the coin, and then on the other side of the coin, you flip it over, and you've got someone like Zaha taking on players and bombing down the flanks. You know, I, someone made up a point yesterday, whether you whether you agree with it or not. Someone like, um, and I'm not comparing him to Zaha, but so, if Theo Walcott was still at our club, he would have probably suited the way Emery played because he has, yeah. had that p- bit of pace and whatever. Like you know, uh, I'm not saying that he's. You, I don't want to start going on that, but someone of that similar real, he might have been able to do a job for us. You know what I mean? More than and the, other, the, other, the other, just one point before Craig comes back in, we've talked about injuries tonight, but I think the biggest loss when we went on this losing run has been Aaron Ramsey. Now, oh, without a doubt. Because he just found that sort of formation, that three, four, one, two with uh, Ozil behind Lacazette and Aubameyang and Ramsey in the pivot with Jacker or Torreira. And Ramsey was sort of like making those third man, Runs, only from midfield, which were unsettling teams, causing Graham. chaos. The yeah. only thing, though, Graham, everyone keeps saying that. Everyone keeps saying about Ramsey deal. being a loss. No. Everyone keeps saying Ramsey's been a loss, yeah? And he has been. However, we are sitting here, or you guys are sitting here, defending a manager who chose to play Matteo Genduzzi ahead of Aaron Ramsey for the first half of this season. That, that, that's the reality. Yeah. We're, we're talking about Ramsey being a loss. But on the other hand, we're defending a manager who has chosen to select Matteo Genduzzi over him consistently. So where's the accountability for that? He was getting results, though, wasn't he? I'm not saying Genduzzi well, yeah, is the reason. That's a very good getting, point. You know, it, he was in, getting in, results, wasn't he? In the early times, at... I mean, in the early times, we were all sitting here, especially when we beat Tottenham. 
Oh, what fantastic tactics. What fantastic substitutions. He changed the game. We were 2-1 down. He changed the game. We come back and we won 4-2. He done it on plenty of occasions. And I, I hear what you're saying, Harry, but he was getting the results. With yeah, Wendell but Craig, Z. if you look at those results when Genduzi started, the games that Genduzi started, we weren't getting results in the majority of them. Have a look at it. Have a look back and look at the games that Genduzi started. I think in the first 20 games of the season or something, he'd started nine and we hadn't won one of them or we'd won one or two of them. So okay. that, that's kind of my point. Aaron Ramsey is a huge loss. Yes. But this manager well, why, why, chose to leave him out for half gonna of the go, season. I'm, 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 right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably, you know, cause a bit of a stir here, but people yesterday are crying over Aaron Ramsey. I must have been one of the very few that wasn't. Um, he's, yes, he's play, yes, he kind of hit some form, but funny that he hits his form when he signs for Juventus. Um, yes, he's had a good season. One good season he had um, and scored us three cup final goals, okay, or two cup final goals. Legendary goals, yes. Legendary player, no. I'm sorry. Um, I people people going your people going on to me. Oh, he broke his leg. Give him some. Give him give him some respect. Of course, I give him respect for coming back and you know and staying and getting back to fitness and and getting back in an Arsenal shirt. But I just do not get the hysteria over Aaron Ramsey leaving uh, Lee. Well, no, I, I, you know, you know how much I, I, I think of what I think of Aaron Ramsey. I, I also think, you know, this, this, this is a myth also that he's only had one good season. He's Arsenal's Player of the Year last year. You know, everybody's going on about Lacazette this season. I'm just saying, to say, saying about Lacazette this season. I think he's had a fantastic season. But uh, Oliver Giroud got more goals than him last season. You know, and uh, and he's he's distasted in a different way. It's who you like and who you don't like. You know, Lacazette. I'm not been... saying I don't like him. No, I, I know, I, know I do not. like him, but I just don't get the hysteria. And when I, people I are saying, like, um, what you just said there, he got player of the year last year, that was because he was the best out of a shit bunch. Well, Lacazette got it this season. You could say the same about him. Right? You know I mean? shit bunch. Uh, yeah, you know, listen, if you're still the best player in the, in the team, if, you know, you're still doing something right, whether it's a good team or a bad team, you know. And uh, listen, you know, I'd rather be player of the year in a, in a Vincible side than, than the one that's happened this time around. I granted, you know. Um, but we were talking yesterday, of, of all these, these players, any of them would have been in the Invincible side now. And and the only one we said was Aaron Ramsey, not as a, not probably as a starter, but someone that would be an important part of the squad coming in and all that like, you know, and because he does something that no other player does and that gets goals from midfield. Have a look at our other midfield players and the goals they get, Craig. They're not, they're not up to scratch. And, you know, I, I, I also think with Aaron Ramsey, he's endured... He's got a lot of fans on his side this season because he signed for Juventus. He could have down tools and he never did. He, he's he's put his body and soul on the line after that and, you know, has pr produced some fantastic performances. And I do agree with what Graham's saying there. I think that it's no coincidence that this poor form has happened why he's not there. And this is no problem when uh, yourself and a lot of other people will probably two or three years' time will turn around and say, oh, don't we miss Aaron Ramsey? One of you a good player for us. I, I think that once he's gone... People will realise what a good player he was for us, you know. They don't come around that often. And I think at the end of the day, as a fan base, we've not got behind him as we should should have done. Now, when you say about he's broke his leg and all that, like I'll go on to a couple of other players, you know, who I thought was a fantastic player for us in um, Eduardo and Diaby. Now, they couldn't get back from injuries like Aaron Ramsey has. So I, I think that, you know, to, to have that sort of injury and come back and play at top level and produce performances that he's done, yes, he's going to get injuries because those other two guys got injuries and couldn't come back from them, Craig. But this is a guy that somehow has got himself back fit, got injured, got fit again, got injured, got fit again. I think his mentality is something that um, doesn't get the credit it deserves and it's certainly something that's lacking in our football team tenfold, you know, and, and he's one of those players that's got it and... I think that he is one of those players who's a winner. And, and, and I do feel that, you know, um, yeah, I think because... I honestly do believe this, Craig. And I, if he hadn't had broke his leg, 
he'd be playing for Barcelona or Real Madrid now because he would have had that extra bit of pace. He wouldn't have got the injuries that he's got. And my God, he's got an engine on him now, you know. And I, I, I think it's a very, very sad day for Arsenal Football Club that he's left. And, and also what makes it even worse, Craig, and this is the thing that I find very, very difficult to take, that he's gone for nothing. You know what I mean? A player of that ability should never be walking away from a football club for nothing. And I'm, I'm you know, and, and it's not the first time this has happened to Arsenal, you know what I mean? And people will blame Wenger and people will blame uh, uh, Gazidis and all that like, but there was an opportunity in in um, January to sell him. Uh, uh, and as much as I love Aaron Ramsey, you know, we weren't ruthless enough with it. You know, and, and it's probably cost us at the end of the day because when it's really mattered, he's not been there any, as uh, when it's mattered because he's been injured again. But that's another story. I just feel that, for me, Aaron Ramsey deserves a lot of credit. Now, I can tell you this now. People used to laugh at me when I said that I prefer to keep Aaron Ramsey to, to Meza Ozil. Laughed at me, you know what I mean? Thought I was at, like, on, on drugs. But I'll tell you what now, if you turn around and said, who would you prefer to keep, Aaron Ramsey or Meza Ozil, there'd be a lot more for a, a, a higher percentage for Aaron Ramsey than what it was back two or three years ago. Craig, also just on that um, Genduzi thing, I've just looked it up because there was a stat that I saw back in whenever it came out. It was on the, just before Christmas, a few days before Christmas. Arsenal on average at that point in the season were gaining on average one point more per game when Matteo Guendouzi wasn't in the team. So okay. that's what that's what I'm saying. It it's all good talking about like sort of, you know, Ramsey being a miss now. But our, this manager chose to leave him out of the team for the first half of the season. I think. I think but yeah, I, mean, think, I, I, think, I think. I think. I think. Craig, are we, are we only nitpicking now because no. he's had a bad seven go? Because he's had a bad seven games. We we haven't qualified for the top four. Uh, no, I've been you, saying this all season. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I know you have. But there's 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 a lot of Can people are nitpicking him now. Oh, he should have done this. He should have done that. He didn't do this. He didn't do that. These Craig. people, these people weren't nitpicking Unai Emery when he was on a twenty-two game unbeaten run. People, were, people were putting up pictures of him. Uh, I mean, there's people on Twitter now who are calling him obscene names, right? And and during the twenty-two game unbeaten season, they're putting tweets up saying, "My manager, my manager. These tactics yeah. are beautiful. My manager." And now they're calling him this, that, and the other. I mean. What is it? This fan base is so bipolar. It's unbelievable. <laughs> that I agree with. That I agree with. <laughs> don't you think? Don't you think all football fans are? Look, the one thing coming back to the Ramsey debate, I'll say one thing, and that was when Emery started at the start of the season, he saw Ramsey as the pressing number ten, when we all know he's a third man running midfielder. Um, so I think he was still not really knowing how to play his players in the best position at start. That first game against Man City, he played. Uh, Mikatar and Ozil out wide. Uh, Ramsey pressing from the front in the 10. So when you say Ramsey chose Gwendouzi over Ramsey, it's because he wanted Ramsey to play at 10 pressing from the front. So that uh, was how he chose to play Ramsey at the front. But that wasn't working so well with Ramsey playing pressing from the front. I'm not saying he can't press, but his best position, we all know that, is in a, a, a midfield three or uh, in a, a midfield pivot. And uh, So essentially he's been mismanaged. Yes, yeah, so, well, <laughs> yeah, possibly you could argue that. So, um, yeah, I think um, you know, Emery uh, was getting to know the players, wasn't he? Getting to know, he knows. I don't think he's got the players at the moment. I don't know if you boys agree to play the style of football he wants to play, and that is the real problem for him at the moment. Um, and uh, I think he was trying players out in certain positions. You know, and because that's the formation he wanted to play. He's, I don't know if you notice. Also, we we early in the season we were. Uh, pressing high up the games now we don't press uh, we were playing more out the back at the start we're not playing out from the back so much now Petr Cech isn't, isn't even in playing out from the back at all now he's probably said to Petr Cech uh, in the Europa League now just hoof it down the field because last week against Valencia I think he completed only three of his 17 passes so I think he suddenly realised he, as the season's gone he hasn't yet got the players to play that he wants to play he tried to play like that at the start and I think slowly but surely he's been experimenting, trying to get players in the position where they are most effective. And with Aaron Ramsey, I think at the start he played him at number ten, pressing from the top, from the uh, the top. And now he, and then he put him back into that sort of central midfield, and that's where he's produced his best form this season. And uh, we talk about stats there when Ramsey, Ozil, uh, Bamiang, Lacazette played in that front four, 
in that 3-4-1-2. When he got the players set up in the shape that suited the players he had, it was working. So I feel a bit unlucky, a bit disappointed that the injury came at such a bad time. He's lost players to injury at key times. Bellerin yeah. was doing wonderfully well on that right-hand side with assists. He lost him to injury. Holding was coming on out the back. He lost him to injury. So I think as much as I can understand what Harry's saying, that we are Arsenal Football Club, we're bigger than just various players, he has had blows where he's lost players at key times when we've been playing, you know, Bellerin after the good win against Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, and then all of a sudden he lost holding and then we went into that losing sequence away from home where he didn't have any centre-backs. He was only playing Jacker at centre-half. So I have some sympathy for him there. I think he has mismanaged these last few games and I think that's, that's where Harry, I think, has a valid point. Uh, that The way that we've sort of capitulated questions have to be asked. There's no doubt about it because I didn't see us being in this position this year to get top four, but having been in the position to get it, it now beggars the question... How did we fall away so spectacularly? How did we only take four points out of 18? I think those are why the fan base has turned the way it has. Yeah, but I'll say it's turned, Craig, but it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be abusive towards Emery. No, 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 no. That's, no, no, that's no, the no. problem. That's but the problem it is. with us. It has. I mean, yeah, I... and it, it shouldn't. You've got, the, like, like Harry has come out and has got fantastic, um, uh, he's, got, uh, he's got his opinion about Emery, but he, he backs it up with good points and you can argue them, you can debate them and that's what it's, that is what it's all about but when you I've never seen Harry being abusive to, to Emery it's like myself I've got my doubts now with uh, Emery uh, but I would never get to 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 abuse him you know what I mean like you know um, I could have done yesterday after that game I could have probably killed him but that's that's uh, the, the emotion of, the, of of that time but for, for us to start uh, banging on and, and going on and that is that the reason when I've not had a go at him when we was getting 22 unbeaten because there were, me and Claude had a fantastic talk about this on the way uh, to the pub yesterday after the game, is that when you're winning games, the cracks were there. The, 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 the flaws were there, but because you won, you brush them under the carpet. You, you don't, you don't, you know, oh, look, we conceded two like goals. Um, we conceded two goals here. We've done that, all that. But when when you, when you start losing, you, 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 you see those things more, Craig. You see what I'm saying? But like, I, I, I think yeah, but, you've got every right to criticise him, but abuse him, no. It's, it's definitely not. He doesn't deserve that. You know what I mean? I mean? As a football fan, you can all hear me, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. As yeah. a football fan, I don't care about it. I'm not looking for flaws if we won a game. No, exactly. Exactly. So you're not going to, are you? No. You're not going to. And anyone that is looking for a flaw after we've won a game is an idiot. No. Yeah, but when you're a manager... No, no, Harry, we've won the game. Get no, over it. It's I, done. It's not, not, it's not like manager, that, though, Move it? on. Move on to the next one. When Move you're on to the next coach, game. Mike, why you are have we... to look at that. You have, why... to, yeah, you but have why, to deal with that. Why is a fan base... Do we? Okay, why is a fan base... Would we sit back after we've beaten Tottenham 4-2 and look for flaws? Who cares? Not in a game like that. Couldn't give a monkey. It shouldn't matter. It shouldn't matter what game it is. We shouldn't sit here, right... No, as fans, you shouldn't. But I'm talking as him as a coach, he should. Yeah. Well, look, you're the coach should, yeah. Yeah, we, that's what I'm saying. Uh, us as fans shouldn't be sitting here talking about, you know, oh, you know. Well, it, I suppose it depends on the situation. I, I mean, if we've lost a game, then yeah, we should be sitting here looking at the flaws. But if we've won a game, we should be... Sitting here talking about all the good things that happened. No, but for, uh, football fans. When, when you are look at yesterday's out. game, Craig, you know what I mean. The emphasis should have been: this is how I see it as 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 a coach and as a manager. And that, like you know, I looked at the bigger picture. We needed three or four goals yesterday to just keep our um, goal average in, in in a good position. If if it it meant that we drew the last game and Chelsea won or Chelsea drew or whatever, like you know, what I mean, we 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 just went out of there with no real game plan, no real emphasis, no real energy. And that's why I think fans have been a little bit critical because I've had people people right. saying we're going to win right. five or six nil. You know, we know that's not going to happen all the time. But that was the that was that was the key yesterday that it wasn't quite what everybody expected. And 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 you're right. I, I, listen, if Arsenal win a game, I don't give a monkey's whether they've what what's happened. It's all about winning, you know, and, and but there are fans out there that want performances. There are fans out there that want um, want um, want want the whole package, if you like. You know what I mean. So that's that, that's how you have to look. I at. want the whole package, but I just don't think we should be so. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. I, I can't. I've lost my train of thought now. But I, 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 
I can't see why. I can't see why Emery is being hounded. I'm not talking about Harry now. I'm I'm, I'm talking about people on social media, what they're saying about him and this, that, and the other. I was the same with Arsene Wenger as well. Even though I wanted him out, I still couldn't understand the grief and 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 the name calling and the and 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 the this that and the other. You know, um, I just don't get it, and I don't get why Emery is being treated like he is um, by the supporters. Of course, there's the questions that need to be answered. Of course, we want to know why we've only picked up um, so many points in so many games, but we've got to do it in a in a way that comes across as a bit classy. Do you know what I mean? People swearing and tweeting him and telling him to go back to in France yeah, and you know and all this crack and no. um, Mustafi's put up a Mustafi put up a post yesterday um, about Ramadan um, and everyone's on there and they're all giving him abuse and Ozil's done the same thing and they're all giving him abuse. Isn't it any wonder that these players are leaving? Isn't it any wonder that no one wants to come in? No, that's bang out of order. Things like that well, bang out of order. You could say that. You know what I mean? I think at the end of the day, you could probably say that. But um, listen, I think, you know, everybody's... I've got those people on social media, Craig. I really do like, you know, I do think that. Well, yeah, but I, see, I still don't expect it. You know, it's just ridiculous. Um, some of the stuff our players have to put up with. Um, I think we're going to have to leave it there, lads. I, I mean, I'd like to carry on all night long, but... <laughs> We are going to have to stop. Um, I'm sorry I didn't get to your questions in the chat room. Um, you know, we, I think we got a bit carried away there with uh, chatting away, um, chatting away to each other. Um, so thank you, uh, 215 of you watching live. Thank you very much. Um, after the last few weeks, I, I'd have been surprised if we got 50. Um, <laughs> yeah, to Craig, be honest. Can we just? Can we just end with thinking whether we're going to get over the line against Valencia this week? Uh, we just hear what the boys are yeah, saying? of course we can. Yeah, um, I think we will. I think we'll score over there. Um, I think their defense, their defense is worse than ours. Um, we should be looking. I mean, we should. Listen, and I'm not over exaggerating here. We should have beaten them six, seven, one last week. Um, they, they, you know, they are, they are, they'll be a different kettle of fish at home. They just won six two at the weekend, by the way. Yeah, they, that one in. they're playing against but, a rele- they're playing against a relegated team. I was surprised last week. He set up. I don't know if Harry noticed because he like, watches more uh, foreign football than me, sort of Italian leagues and Spanish leagues. But I thought they'd go with a four four two last week, but they were more conservative. They went four five one. They lacked intensity in midfield last week, Valencia. But if they get an early goal in that stadium, just be, that's when the pressure is going to be on, isn't it? And we'll yeah. find out what well, we're I think like. we'll score, though. I think we'll score. Yeah. Uh, I think um, I think Graham's absolutely right. They're a completely different animal in the Mastaya. But having said that, and I've said this all season, I think in the Europa League, where we've had the advantage over the likes of Napoli and, and then obviously Valencia in the first leg, is that the Premier League it demands a much higher intensity. And we've, you know, we've got that week to week and then it it filters over into those Europa League games. And when we're on it and when we're at our best, they just simply can't handle it. But we're going to have to defend those set plays better, Harry. That they, they, they are. Right. I mean, that this zonal marking and sort of like uh, playing the high line, looking for offside. I mean, we saw the way we conceded at the Emirates. Um, we conceded seven goals in four games from set plays. The way we defend set plays, they're going to notice that's our weakness, and they're going to be pinging balls into our box. And they've got tall guys, aren't they? So uh, I think we need to defend these set plays better. I'm confident. I think we'll win. Um, Manchester City are one nil up. Who company, scored? Company has just scored uh, uh-huh. after 70 minutes. Um, Lee, Valencia, the Mastaya. I hate the name of that. It sounds like a sexy <laughs> transmitted disease. Oh, you've got Mastaya. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'm looking at the Gav. Graham just said it there as well. Like, you know, that I think the first 20 minutes are going to be key. I think we've got to make sure we don't concede. I think that. Don't underestimate Valencia. They went in with a very, very defensive unit against us at the Emirates. They, they, they didn't play certain players in certain places. They looked to, to uh, you know, defend and hit us on the break and get the away goal, which they got. But um, I, I, I do think that um, that Bamiyan goal right at the end will be 
will be such a key goal for us. I think that we may may lose this one over there, but two one or something. But uh, of course, that'd be good enough for us. So I, I do I do feel that um, confident that we'll go through in this. Um, and I, I think that the the lads will put in the performance. I, I do believe that. Okay. Um, just while I've got you all here live, um, like I say, I'd just like to, I know I've done it before and I've done it on Twitter, I'd just like to make the apologies for the last few weeks. Um, I haven't a bloody clue what has been going on. Um, I mean, even tonight, this hangout is not working properly, even though you can all hear us. Unfortunately, Lee and Harry can't hear each other. Um, so... I'm not too sure what's worked going well, on. Though, isn't it it worked well. has worked very well. But, um, <laughs> apparently, this is something going on with Google. Um, I've spoken to a few other podcasters, and they're having the same issue. Um, so hopefully, Google will fix that, um, and you know, we can we can get back into the swing of things. But um, thanks very much for sticking by us. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, we've got the FBAs at the end of the week. Uh, on the 9th, unfortunately, um, due to working and this, that, and the other, um, none of us are going. The Let's Arsenal be being on as well don't help, yeah. <laughs> and the Arsenal plan as well. Yeah, that don't help. Um, you know, I mean, look, we appreciate everyone that voted for us highly. Thank you very much for getting us into the last 15. Uh, that in itself, um, is a massive achievement. We've only been going for two years. Um, so you know, to get into to get into a list of people that have been podcasting for years and years and years and years, um, it's a massive achievement and one I'm very proud of. Um, but like I always say, we're nothing without you, lot. Um, yeah. So as yeah. long as you're still here, we'll keep doing it. Um, so yeah, I mean, look, there's over 200 of you in the live chat, uh, over 200 of you watching. If we keep getting those numbers, why wouldn't we keep doing it? Um, so yeah. So thank you to you all. Uh, my thanks to uh, Harry. Thank you very much, mate. Thank you. My Cheers, thanks. Harry. Nice talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> you too. Yeah. You can't even hear me. <laughs> yeah. My thank. My, my thanks to Graham. Thank you very much, yeah. mate. Cheers, yeah, pleasure as always, Craig. Good, good. And of course, um, my aunt to my deck, my laurel to my hardy, uh, my hair to my no hair. <laughs> Lee judges. <laughs> Um, thank you very much, sir. No, nah, um, a pleasure. I really enjoyed it. Like, it's good yeah, to it's, good. it's, good to it's, it's a bit of therapy, yeah. isn't it? It's a bit yeah, of it is. Yeah. It does make you feel a lot better afterwards, right? You know, so. Hopefully, um, hopefully we can, you know, we'll rock on on Thursday and, and we'll get into the Europa League final. Look, just before I go, it's not all done yet. It's not all done yet. Um, yes, we're all disappointed that um, we haven't made the Champions League through the league positions. But look, we've still got a chance. We're still two games away. Um, I know on Twitter I've said that I'm, I'm not too sure do I want us in it. I still stand by it. But I know a lot of you want us in it. Um, it's not over yet. We can still get in the Champions League via the back door. So until it's over, it's not over until the fat lady sings. And until she does, see you all soon. And up the Arsenal. <laughs>